Good morning all. Uh, my name is Fabiano Maggio and I'm responsible for the system dynamics team here at EngineSoft. So we take care of uh, moving systems in general, vibrations and all the problems that involve at the same time multi-body dynamics and finite elements uh, with particular focus on vibrations and fatigue and all interconnected problems of this part. And today I'm going to introduce you the technology we use mainly for the analysis of moving systems, which is Recodyne. And I will use an example of, a, I would say, an application slash benchmark we did for Toyota handling manufacturing here in Italy, which became our happy customers at the end of this uh, uh, test, at this benchmark. So, uh, to move on, um, yes, after the introduction of the software, I will show you mm, some differences in modeling this type of vehicles, which is itself, well, it, it could be considered simple or complicated depending on the type of, uh, of outputs you're interested on, but my focus will be in showing you that the choice you make for modeling a vehicle uh, in multi-body environment will affect strongly what you will get from the model. And I'm used to say that multi-body is a bit different from other simulation technologies because there is still a big human component in using a multi-body software because the user will decide actually how the physics, the real physics is virtualized. So it's still uh, an area of simulation where the software counts, but also the uh, preparation and, and the expertise of the user counts. And what we try to do at Hension Soft, and that's the reason why we are uh, getting customers also leaving our competitors, is that we offer the technology, but also the knowledge to, to model, to make models of their products. So the combination of products and expertise, which is pretty much necessary in multi-body simulation. Um, yeah, thinking to this type of product, so the, the fork or lift the truck, uh, they have very common problems. As you can expect, they, they, they can tilt, they can roll uh, on, on the side, and there are a number of tests that are set by regulation. So in the normal design path, uh, at Toyota, but I also believe in any other company doing this kind of product, they, they have to design the product to pass all the tests. But unfortunately, the tests are uh, done at the end of the design process when you have a physical prototype. You cannot run up front a test. Uh, sometimes they use uh, similar vehicles, sometimes they use uh, already existing vehicles, but you are never sure that the, the new product you are designing will pass the test at the end because differences count, especially in dynamics where the non-linearities are always big and very important. So you will be very happy to be able to test your real new product at the beginning, but that's not possible. So the main reason for simulation in designing four lifts, at least for Toyota, was to have a tool capable of replicating the physical tests in a very early stage. When you have only a few information about the size of the vehicle, position of wheels, and, and, and performances you expect from the product. So you want to avoid to achieve at the end of the development process and, and be in, in the playing ground with your new vehicle and, and find that it, it does not pass uh, one or more tests. So we uh, anticipate issues, basically. Um, yes, I've already said this, because if you find something wrong at the end, you have to redesign. Hopefully, you can just adjust your physical prototype, but most of the time you have to replace parts and then repeat the test. And the tests are a cost itself, and this is a very sensitive point because you have to uh, use uh, expensive equipment, it takes time, and uh, you're never sure that your adjustments will 
save uh, the situation. Maybe you need to redesign again and again. So this loop has to be broken for Toyota. And that's why they consider to apply multi-body dynamic simulations up front. Uh, Recodyne is a uh, simulation um, product that is uh, somehow similar to other existing multi-body tools, but it does have some very specific features that makes it different and, let me say, a bit more advanced. Uh, we are equivalent for rigid body dynamics to any other product, but we are very strong on the flexible, multi-flexible body simulation. You will see in a minute why. And we have, we have implemented in the software both the linear approach, which is available in any software, but we also have the so-called non-linear flexibility, which is a proprietary technology and we can use it to do things that can be done with the linear approach. So this is an area where we can do things that the competitors cannot. And also we have a huge library of contacts that makes possible to fit in any kind of problem. And of course the solver is designed to perform with these components that I have listed. Um, Focusing on the, on the flexibility of the bodies, I mean, multi-flexible body simulation is something that is becoming a need, especially because, uh, uh, not maybe for the, the, the forklift trucks, but in general, when you deal with uh, fast-moving systems, the flexibility of bodies is very important because it affects the dynamics. But anyway, to give you a quick view, um, we have this linear method you know, and create Bampton theory and there is a lot of, of, of detail to behind, you can check by your own, but the point is that with this approach you can make any, any body flexible, but you have some limitations, so only small deformations, uh, you must have uh, very uh, precise interfaces between the flexible body and the rest of the model, and you can use only linear material. These are constraints that you have to fulfill to uh, use this approach. And the, the result is based on the superimposition of modes. We have this in record time. Whenever it's possible, we use it because this approach is very efficient. But on the other hand, uh, we have a second approach to flexibility, which is our special feature that makes us different. We call it full flex. Uh, and this has no limitations. It's very similar to finite elements. This is really something that overlaps explicit finite element simulation. Uh, we can use any type of contact. We can apply contact over flexible bodies, which is not possible with the other approach. And of course, this is heavier. This approach is heavier, so we need more time to get the results. But we can simulate things that cannot be simulate with the linear approach. Think to, uh, for instance, a telescopic arm where you have sliding contacts over flexible bodies. That cannot be done with, with the linear approach, but we can do it with the full flex. Uh, about contacts, just a quick, uh, a quick uh, story about. We have both analytical and general contacts. On the analytical contact side, we are similar to our competitors, except for the fact that our library is very extended. As you can see, we have, uh, I think there are like 15 options. And uh, since analytical contacts are very efficient, whenever it's possible, we use them. And we are lucky because uh, we have many possibilities. For instance, just to give you an idea, this cylinder in cylinder contact, which is an analytical contact, is very useful when you have pin into hose coupling and you need to take into account the clearance between the pin and the hole. And if you use that kind of contact, the, the uh, computational effort is similar to a joint, but on the other hand, you have the real description of the, in the way the two bodies interact. For the general contacts, which means basically mesh-based contacts, uh, we have, again, many, many options. The message is that we have a standard approach, which is similar to other competitors, where we simply use the mesh 
that we create on the surfaces of the impacting bodies. But we also have a proprietary technology we call GeoContact, where we can apply smoothing options, a very advanced technology. And we can also have the stiffness of the contact that, is, that becomes variable with the number of nodes that are actually in contact. And again, both types of contacts can be of 3D type or 2D type. Record has many interfaces to co-simulate with other products, but the main that I want to stress about is this interface with fluid dynamics. You have just seen the presentation about particle works. Recordine can interact with particle works and co-simulate mechanics together with fluid dynamics, which means that we consider in the mechanical simulation the loads coming from the fluid dynamics and vice versa. The fluid dynamics uh, boundary conditions are set by the multi-body model that is running together. So we, can, we are the only technology that can interface and co-simulate with fluid dynamics today. Other interfaces are very common with, with the, with the um, MATLAB for the Cosmos system design. We support the FMI standard and we recently introduced an interface for KSOFT to make advanced simulations of gears and the software is very customizable, of course. So just to give you a little show, we made this simple model. The model itself is not complicated, but at the beginning, we didn't want to have complicated models because we, uh, we are just playing with the model to have a good layout we wanted to have for certain performances. So, we just made a little model with the tires and, and we put the contacts between loads and, and of course the forks and we simulated them. So uh, what can we get from a model like this? Apparently not really much, but we are already taking into account the behavior of the tires and the tires that are important in this vehicle because they affect the oscillations that are triggered by uh, passing over a path. And we also considered the possibility of starting from a rigid model and then adding flexibility only in certain areas, not everywhere. Um, in record line, it's very easy to create what we call hybrid models where we have certain, model, certain bodies that are rigid, some other bodies are modeled in a linear way, so reduced flex, and some others are full flexible. You can have all of them in the same model. Of course, we keep the model with sensors to measure accelerations and to predict loads in certain areas of the model. Predicting load is very important for Toyota because uh, loads are then used for sizing parts. So uh, at the beginning of the design, you cannot use approximated load unless you oversize parts. And if you run multi-body simulation up front and you try to, to, to stress your model, creating the worst possible condition, you can easily uh, calculate up front the sizing loads for your system, which means that you uh, make structures that are already good to pass the test without exaggerating with the sizing. So it's very important in dynamical conditions to know the maximum loads. And it's also important to predict the loading cycles for fatigue purposes. And you can have both kind of outputs from multi-body simulation. So as you can see this, uh, from this simulation, which is quite fast because it's a 12 minute CPU, it's already quite a nonlinear model because we already have contacts in place we estimated since the beginning the, the overall response of the system and the amount of loads at the joints that are included in the model to assemble the model. But then we made it a little bit more complicated. So we took this part of the model because uh, starting from a fully rigid model, we realized that maybe the loads calculated with a full rigid model are too high. So we had to convert some, some parts of the model into flexible. And we started from this, which is probably 
the, the main part affecting the dynamics. So inner and outer mass bodies were converted into flexible. And in this case, since the two parts are sliding parts, so they are uh, interacting along an extended surface, we could not use the linear approach. We had to set contacts between inner and outer. So this part was modeled using the full flex technologies. Full flex means already that we have a large model. We are talking of uh, more than 100,000 degrees of freedom to solve in the single simulation. Adding flexibility makes the model more complicated, but of course it makes more adherent to the real physics. And so we simulated it again, and it's basically the same simulation we had before, so same tires, but now the flexibility is going to change the way the load is transferred from the weight to the chassis of the vehicle. So we have a better estimation of the internal load for sizing purposes. Of course, you have to accept an increased calculation time, and there is no option to this because you have a huge amount of degrees of freedom. Full flex technology requires longer time. Then at the end, we wanted to make the model even better. So uh, we, we started from a simple uh, way to model the tires, just considering the radial behavior of the tires. And we wanted to try something more refined. So we replaced the contact with uh, a tire model. And we tried to repeat again the simulation. Um, you, you see the graphics is a little bit different. Now you, you see there is just one wet vector per tire because it's calculated by the tire model. And again, uh, what I can show you is that removing the full flex, the calculation time has reduced a lot. What we understood at the end is that different approaches give different results, but at the, at the end of the day, we understood by comparing the outputs with the experiments, we understood that most to the one featuring the full flex mass uh, was the closest to the real physics. And so we understood the importance of including flexibility in certain area of the, of the truck. And uh, yes, we kept that scheme and we repeated the simulation. We got the load for sizing and so the finite element analysis that were carried out uh, downstream were more reliable immediately. Uh, where's the saving now? And, 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 and I like this slide because it includes the comment from, from a Toyota manager. We saved the time because uh, using the loads predicted with multi-body simulations, they were able to uh, arrive at the test day with a product that was already done, that was already uh, good to pass the test. And uh, yeah, if you move the redesign loop from real to virtual, immediately you save time because you run it at the beginning and uh, the cost of making the model is, is just once, and then you use the model to improve and improve and improve. So, this change in the methods of working for moving systems can make the difference and can generate a huge saving in time and money, of course. So uh, that was uh, all from, from my side. And if you have any questions, I'm here. Otherwise, you can just type me an email or write to info at and I'll be happy to answer your questions in a second time.